Hello, my name is Kanya Ford. I am a certified clinical sexologist and master sexologist, a graduate of the Dr. Rachel's Institute. So today I bring to you a topic that it's a little bit difficult. Sometimes it's not the um, easiest to recognize that it needs to be talked about, but I'm certainly glad to be bringing it to you today. So I'm going to be talking about forgiveness of self. Now, why I feel like you should listen to this entire topic is because I know that with the key points that I'll be bringing to you today, it will be able to resonate with you. You will be able to identify some of these um, key points and topics. And at the end, I will make sure that you have some takeaways so that you can implement some changes that you may feel is needed in your everyday. So overall, you know, the theme is, you know, find yourself and then find me. So some of those uh, key topics that we'll talk about throughout this will be how to forgive yourself, you know, forgiving yourself for any of the things that may be holding you back from moving forward in life and in love. Setting boundaries. Identifying and accepting your flaws. That's a big one. Begin to date yourself. So we'll talk about how do we do that? And what does that even mean? And then I want you to fall in love with you. And as you see, there's a sort of progression to those topics. Um, they all go hand in hand. And so we're going to dive into this and we're going to learn how to forgive ourselves. So a little bit of backstory about me. I am a married mother of five amazing children, one dog, and I would have never been able to see where I am today, even 15, 20 years ago. You know, and growing up, um, it was a big thing to pick. Kids picked on each other back then. And so being self-conscious was a huge thing. And with self-consciousness comes with um, starting to not really love yourself like you need to. But outside of that, um, growing up, I wasn't always told, you know, I love you. I wasn't giving all the hugs. You know, I wasn't taking care of the way that myself and my heart needed to. And so I kind of created my own sense of self-worth. Um, which was very low, and I created in my mind what I thought was love. And as we know, if you're not taught the proper um, ways of love, you kind of fall into whatever works in the moment, right? So the reason why I want to share this with you is in the hopes that it can help to change a little bit of your outcome. If you see some of the similarities in the stories that I may have to tell you, maybe you'll be able to kind of stop midway, sit back, think about it, and possibly go into a different direction in your future. If I had someone that was able to sit with me as a young adult, even a late teen, and give me this guidance or give me, um, even if I was able to watch view a video like this, it may have changed the course that I took to get to where I am. I'm very excited and happy for where I am. Um, but the course that it took me to get here was a little bit, you know, kind of rough. So let's dive into what we're going to talk about today, which is forgiveness of self. So throughout life, we go through ups and downs. Um, we go through quarrels with our friends. We go through quarrels with our family. And oftentimes, it's if you go through a, a strike with someone, you know, I'm sorry, usually comes out. Or, you know, forgive me or I apologize. And someone ends up forgiving someone else. Now, that relationship, once that has happened usually doesn't always go exactly back to where it um, could be, but you kind of get to a close enough place of friendship um, that you can kind of be cordial. So we think about that internally for ourselves. How do we forgive ourselves? Um, 
we simply a lot of times we don't and that's just the bottom line we do things and we internalize it and we hold ourselves accountable forever and it doesn't seem like we can let it go so I want to talk to you about how do we kind of let some of those things go Growing up, you probably have done some foolish things. You know, I was at the age of 20 years old. I had two baby girls under the age of two. Was that ideal for my life? Is that where I should have been? Um, not exactly. I was a first year college dropout and living in Section 8 housing. I had Done some pretty crazy things, thought I was in love, um, ended up with a criminal background, so I was also working a dead-end job. So here I am, 20 years old, two babies under the age of two, working a dead-end job. That's not where I saw my life going forever, so I knew I needed to change some things. Well, that did not come immediately. I held on to all of the things that I did wrong. And I just let that fester within me. And I lived with it and I lived with it and I, I, I went to work with it. You know, um, my baby girls, I'm pretty sure they felt it. And so it became a part of my every day. So from the ripe age of 20 years old, I held on to all of that. Look at me. I dropped out of school. I'm taking care of two kids. I'm living in Section 8 housing. I have this background. I'll never get a good job. I carried all of that with me throughout the years and it got to a point where I just didn't care and so when you get to a point where you just don't care you essentially you give up on yourself and there's not another person outside of you that can convince you that you are worthy at that point so what do you do you just coast through life numb which is not a healthy place to be so what I had to learn is how to forgive myself. I had to recognize that when I am 20 years old, when I am 18, 19, 17, even younger than that, I am going to make mistakes. It's if I don't learn from those mistakes that it truly becomes a failure. So in my world, nothing is a failure unless you don't learn from it. So I learned, I learned that certain people that were in my life wasn't meant any good for me in my life. So I needed to let those relationships go. I learned that just because I made a mistake and now I have this background that wouldn't allow me for a great job now, doesn't mean I don't stop fighting to get to that great job that I deserve. I learned to forgive myself for not finishing college at an early age, and I went back to college. And here I sit today uh, with a master's degree and a certification in sexology. Woo! So you don't ever stop yourself from moving forward, and that comes with being able to forgive yourself. So yes, I had to learn to forgive me for being a young person, for living life, for not always listening and looking at the red flags, for just kind of um, making my life what it was. I had to forgive myself for that. It wasn't until I forgave me that I was able to land an, a job opportunity that I stayed in for the next eight years, gain a lot of experience, figure out what I wanted to do in life, when I forgave me, it allowed me to pour into my two baby girls to let them know that mommy's going to be okay. We're all going to be okay. When I forgave myself, I then got on the right track to get out of Section 8 housing and to buy my own home because my ultimate goal was to give my baby girls a backyard. So in that forgiveness, I began to create goals. And when you create goals you work towards those and that gives you a purpose and I had to want that for me no one else could tell me no one else could convince me and no one else can make me do any of those things that I needed to accomplish 
but me. So in my forgiveness, I let all of that negativity go and therefore positivity was able to fill me. And that's the path that I led from then on. So setting boundaries. Um, a part of forgiveness is setting boundaries. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you think about it, I had to forgive myself for allowing myself to be in um, negative relationships. I had to forgive myself for, um, you know, dropping out of school, allowing whatever circumstances around me to, to just allow me to do those things. So what I didn't do and what I didn't know how to do in that time was set boundaries. And what are those boundaries? Those boundaries come in a place of if someone is not healthy for myself, then I need to like or love them from a distance. Sometimes that includes family, guys. You know, the hardest thing that we can ever do sometimes is to set a boundary between ourselves and our family because we feel like if we're born into this blood relationship, you know, it, it has to be strong and, you know, we just we can't. That's our family. We can't do anything about that, but that's not true. You'll always be family. If you're born into it, blood related, you're always going to be family. However, you're perfectly with, well within your right to set boundaries. And how you set those boundaries does matter. What type of boundaries do we set? It could be something as, and I'll, I'll give you an example. When my uh, oldest daughter was first born, immediately, my mom and my grandma, oh, do this for her. She needs this. I don't care what the doctor says. I'm going to give her water anyway. Uh, do the, Dress her like this and feed her this. As a young parent, that can drive you crazy. And sometimes it drives people further away from their families than they actually want to be. So if I were at that time strong enough, I would be able to say to my um, mom and to my grandma, hey guys, I know that you want to help me and I certainly appreciate it, but this is my daughter and I want to learn these things on my own. If it's okay with you, can I just ask you when I need your help? So in that moment, it may hurt their feelings a little bit, but I'm starting to create and set a boundary that would be long lasting. Now, not setting those boundaries early on, and this goes for anything, can turn into um, kind of a disaster later on. So think about this. When we first get into a relationship, typically we don't say things that we really feel in the moment. You know, it could be something that we don't like. Um, it could be how they cook and you really don't like the meal, but you kind of eat it anyway because you don't want to hurt their feelings. Well, you know, after about two to three years of that thing that you didn't like or that food that you didn't like, you kind of get comfortable. You've gotten comfortable with your partner at that point, right? And so you're starting to tell them the things that you don't like or the things that you don't like to eat. In their mind, you're changing. And that's because throughout all of those years prior to you saying something, you just accepted whatever the behavior was or you just ate whatever the food was that you were eating. And so you see, by not setting boundaries early on in any relationship, it does show up later. And it shows up usually not in a positive way. So setting those boundaries early on in any relationship, whether it be with your friends in high school, friends in college, your partner, your marriage, your work relationships, you know, that's a really, really major thing. Whether it be any of those that you need to set, set them early. You need to find how it's most comfortable for you to communicate those boundaries, but absolutely, you want to make sure you're setting those boundaries for sure. So the next topic, uh, key point that I like to point out is how do we identify and accept our flaws? Growing up, my flaw was I was this skinny mini little toothpick. I had the glasses and my legs were bowed. 
And so all the middle school, you know, kids, kids tease you. That was just my flaw. I never thought I was beautiful. Never accepted that I was paper thin. Never accepted that the, my glasses would be, you know, make me look nice. I never accepted those things. But I didn't recognize what it was that was making me angry. So I couldn't identify at the time. I was too young. So growing up, I had to sit back and I had to first identify what those flaws were, air quotes there, um, and then I had to accept them. Because honestly, what may feel like a flaw to you may not even be recognized by anyone else outside of you. However, it is very important that you yourself is are able to recognize them because it's for your internal healing and not for anyone else's. So if you want to sit and just grab your journal, you know, and just if you think about any times that you've been angry or upset or just unaccepting of you and you just can't figure out why, just kind of write down those things from when you were younger that if someone made mention to, it made you a little uneasy. Or if someone said a certain word, it made you flinch or made you just angry or, you know, upset. Write those down. So that part is identifying. You're now identifying the flaws. So what I would write down is my body size, glasses, and bow legs. Those are me identifying my flaws. And then I need to accept them. And how I accept them is, it's me. I love me, it's me. But it took me years to get there. It didn't just happen overnight. But that's how I accept it. I accept that this is who I am going to be. So now that I accept, accepted this, I need to be the best skinny, bow-legged, glasses-wearing woman moving forward that I can be. Right? So then, now that we have forgiven ourselves, we've set these boundaries, we've identified and we've accepted our flaws, let's take ourselves on a date. <laughs> well, so, how do one date itself? <laughs> how do we do that? Um, simply, very easy. Even if you've never been on a date with another person, the easiest person that you should be able to date is yourself. So if that means you get you a calendar or a date book and once or twice a month, you pencil something in. Now I want you to take this back. Take this way back. Think back to elementary, middle, and even high school. Think about one of those places that you used to go with your family or with your friends and it really, it just, it put a smile on your face. It made your heart warm. Think of one of those places, you know, King's Dominion, um, Six Flags, um, Hershey Park, uh, Disney World, the, you know, the, the local park, a picnic, you know, church local restaurant, any of those places, before you get to the calendar book in that same journal that we wrote our flaws that we accepted, um, that we identified and accepted, I want you to write down a list of places. Your list could be three places. Your list could be 45 places. It is your list. So with those places listed out, then you want to go over to your date book or your phone, wherever you keep your calendar, and just put those plans in and this is not for you to invite someone else this is simply a time for you to date yourself this is time for you to get to know yourself you may go to one of those places in current day and it does nothing for you well awesome you've just learned something new about yourself Hershey Park no longer makes you smile. So, scratch that off the list. 
Um, you may go to a restaurant that you used to go to when you were little and they still have this dish that you used to love and you order that dish and you devour it. Mm. You've just learned something else about yourself. The taste for this dish didn't go away. But in all of that, the most important thing that you're doing is you're spending time with just you. When you're able to date yourself, you're not having to focus on another person. You're not having to entertain another person. You're not having to work on anyone else's time but your own. It is simply all about you. You're getting further into yourself. So I can't wait to hear about those dates that you're going to go on. So we've forgiven ourselves. We've set our boundaries. We've identified and accepted our flaws. We've gone out on a date with us. So what is left? It is time to fall in love with ourselves. Now, this is probably easier said than done because um, not everyone knows truly what love is and what it feels like to be loved because we all did not grow up immersed in that feeling. So it is now up to us because we've taken those other steps moving forward. It is now up to us to recognize and identify what we feel and perceive as love. What do we truly love about ourselves? So grab that same journal. And I want you to go into a, if you can get a full length mirror. And I want you to go start from the top of your head. And I want you to go all the way down to the tips of your toenails. And I want you to write down one beautiful thing that you see about yourself going all the way down. It could be, I love the way my hair coils. Oh, my eyebrows, they are arched perfectly. My nose is shaped the way it needs to be. My elbows, they're always so nice and silky smooth. I enjoy the way my calves have looked since I worked out. You're identifying little tiny things about yourself. And in doing that, you're not even realizing you're praising yourself. You're giving yourself self-love. You're loving different things about you. In a time where, you know, you probably don't get as many compliments that you feel are um, genuine as they could be, this is a time to compliment yourself. The more you do this, if you come home every single day and the more you do this and you see yourself in that mirror, you're going to fall deeper and deeper in love with yourself. So once we've identified all of these superficial out, outer characters that we love, let's start to think about the things internal that we love. So if we think about what makes you feel good, when you see someone else succeed, does that make you feel warm inside? Write it down. When your dog runs up to you and they lick you on the knee to show their sign of affection and that makes you feel good, write that down. When you are able to pay for a stranger's groceries because they may not have it and that makes you feel good, write that down. So now we're identifying character, identification of character items that we love about ourselves. So that's how we're going to come, go from that surface love. We're going to deeper into falling in love with ourselves. And yes, I absolutely feel like you should do this on a daily basis. If you can walk past your bathroom mirror every morning right after you brush your teeth or before you or whenever and just say hey i love you fall in love with yourself if you already love yourself great you'll love yourself even more if you don't have that love that you really feel like you deserve then you'll get there but i want you to i'll tell you what how would you do this for me get a dry erase marker 
write some of those amazing characteristics internally and externally that you love. Write it on the mirror. And so every day you're reminded of the things that make you amazing and the things that help you to fall in love with you. Daily reminders of your being an amazing person. You can't go wrong with that. Right? I've given you five different examples of how we can find ourselves before we go out here and we try to find someone else. So to recap it all, we talked about how to forgive yourself, key, 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 key point, into moving forward in a successful and healthy adult life. Forgive yourself for any and all of the mistakes that you may have made getting to where you are today. For anyone that you may have hurt in the process of getting to where you are today. For potentially hurting yourself to get to the person that you are today. Forgive yourself. Set boundaries. Ensuring that you set boundaries for yourself, for others, and for others, for yourself. Definitely set boundaries. Very important, whether it be family, friends, at work, otherwise. Set boundaries. Yes, even with your children, set boundaries. Identify and accept your flaws. Your flaws are what make you who you are. Identify them, accept them, embrace them, turn them into non-flaws because they're your characteristics. They are you. Begin to date yourself. Take yourself to places that you would never take another person. You be the first person to experience that for yourself so that down the line, if you do find that person, you can bring them into this place and maybe they can feel the same joy that you felt. Date yourself. And last, I want you to fall in love with yourself. I want you to love yourself so much that you're sick of it. And that's just fine. Even if that means writing all of those amazing external and internal characteristics with a dry erase marker on your mirror so you can see it every day do so. So your takeaways from this topic today is A, I would love for you to go out and get your journal and I want you to write those things down. I want you to start planning dates for yourself. I want you to begin to forgive yourself. So in the beginning of this um, topic, I talked about being a married mother of five. You know that when I first started out, I was 20 years old with two kids under the age of two. Criminal background, dead-end job. But I didn't want that for myself. So I sit before you today with a master's degree in human resources, a certification in sexuality coaching, and a thriving business to help others reach their full potential of self so that they can do amazing things in the world. If you are ready to make that step in your healing process, I am always open for you to contact me so we can get your session scheduled. My name is Kanye Ford. You can call me Coach K. I am with Love and Intimacy 101. You can always reach me at 804-967-4551. You can also email me at info at loveandintimacy101.com. And please feel free to visit my website just to learn more about Coach K. And that's loveandintimacy101.com. The and is spelled out. I appreciate you listening to me 
and I genuinely hope that you take away some very important pieces that can help you in your healing process, in your journey of life. Because overall, I want you to find yourself before you go out and you find anyone else. You'll have an amazing rest of your day. And I look forward to connecting with you in the future. Thank you.